friends at Tivoli Brewing Company and the Department of Communication Arts and Sciences at MSU Denver, this is Unfiltered. And here are your hosts, Jay Schrader and Dr. Samuel J. Today, uh, I'm here with Kevin Brower. Uh, Kevin is from DraftGuard, and I'm going to let Kevin explain what DraftGuard here is in a second. Uh, just a little bit of information before Kevin and I get started. Jay can't be here today. Um, his, I believe his youngest, no, his, his oldest son broke his hand uh, a couple of days ago. So now he's trying to, to get several doctor's opinions to see whether or not he needs a, a cast because as Kevin and I both know, um, a 10 to 12 year old boy uh, in the summer with a cast on his hand is, that's a bad thing. Uh, you're you're going to end up ripping that thing off anyway. So not idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're thinking of you, Jay. Um, everybody else, you know where to find us, unfilteredcraft.com. That's got all the information you need for our socials. Uh, anchor.fm uh, slash unfiltered.craft will get you to all the podcast platforms that you need. But that's enough about us. Today, I want to introduce you to Kevin Brower. Uh, as you kind of, uh, as we alluded to, I actually not alluded to, made pretty clear a couple of month, minutes ago. Uh, Kevin is from DraftGuard, uh, based out of Milwaukee. But with that, Kevin, I'm just going to hand it over to you, buddy. Uh, good to see you. Thanks for coming on the show today. Really appreciate it. I mean, thank you. I, uh, I appreciate you bringing me on and, and I appreciate that opportunity to chat. Um, and as we kind of exchanged in our couple of initial emails, we're, we're talking about good beer, right? So it kind of falls right in line with, with what our mission is. Um, and I figured that it would make some sense if, if we uh, hopped on together and, and chat a little bit about that. So I appreciate it. I, uh, I'm glad to be on with you. Well, I wanted to, you know, before you jump into introduction too, I think uh, so often we hear the same narrative, the same story from craft brewers uh, in these times of, of kind of peril. I don't want to say peril, but for a lot of folks, it is peril. It's not, it's rough, it's rough times, even, even as breweries start to open up, but it's good to get a perspective from somebody who services the industry um, and services, not just craft breweries, but obviously restaurants and bars, because I think you probably have a better understanding oftentimes a kind of 30,000 foot perspective than, you know, a lot of those craft brewers out there. So that's why we brought you on. I really appreciate it, Kevin. But uh, yeah. with that yeah. said, can you introduce yourself? And then, you know, let's start with you and then we'll get a draft card. Absolutely. So Kevin Brower, um, calling in from Milwaukee, uh, the beer capital of the world. It is. I'm, I'm biased, I have to say that. Uh, born and raised here and, and I guess kind of, uh, I, I don't know, I, I guess I kind of always grew up with um, with with beer in the background um i mean being in in such a historic city i feel like it's such a natural part of our culture mm -hmm. um and so it's it's kind of full circle to be now working for a company and then and on a product um and trying to develop a brand that is based around beer um and as you said while we aren't producing beer we're trying to work closely with uh, both the folks who, who brew and, and create and design uh, and, and make that beer, as well as um, uh, those establishments who are, who are serving it. So how we got started, I mean, we might as well jump right into it, uh, if you don't mind. Um, no, let's, let's we, do uh, so we actually, our company hails from the, the water world, the water treatment world. Um, which is also a very natural setting uh, for us here in Milwaukee, um, being on Lake Michigan. We're, uh, we're about a nine-year-old uh, water technology company that we kind of originated out of the uh, industrial and commercial water treatment world okay. where we do mineral and, and biological control or management for heavy industrial commercial processes um, whether that is in mining applications or power plants or uh, evaporative cooling and HVAC and even on the, the process side in brewing. Um, so it's, it's, there's kind of a nice parallel where we're, we're getting in on the action um, very much behind the scenes of some of the largest breweries in the world. And on the opposite, um, and with DraftGuard, we're, we're working with um, – smaller breweries and on the kind of consumer facing side of things. So that's kind of our background. Um, and given what we had had been able to and what we continue to do and prove and, and succeed at very well in the, on the water side of things, 
specifically when it comes to bacteria management and biologics. And I promise I won't get too technical. No, you, hey, you're you. fine. Seriously, you totally um, can. We've, we've had yeast okay. guys on here. We've had uh, draft cleaning guys. And so uh, PhDs and all that. You can, you can get into the mud, buddy. People will listen. Excellent. Well, I am no PhD, so I'll clarify that right now. So I hope you don't call me out, Frank. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Um, awesome. So we what with with what we've been able to prove uh, again on the water side of things and the success that we've had, specifically in in managing and preventing and reducing the growth of of biologics in different water systems. Again, whether that's a residential or a domestic system or a power plant we wouldn't have even entertained moving into the beer side of things. And so draft guard and, and draft beer is, is fairly new to us. Um, I came on board uh, just about two years ago, actually as an intern, uh, I went to Marquette university here in Milwaukee and going into my senior year, I started with the company and kind of took draft guard over as my main focus. Um, still very much in, in the development phase of things at that time where our main goal was to collect as much data as we could work as with, with as many craft breweries as we could, uh, to prove this thing out. Um, natural question now would be what is, what is that thing? What, what is draft guard? Uh, we, took our technology that we implement in all these different markets. Um, you know, the same technology that's being used by the Googles and the Boeings and the GEs of the world, we wanted to implement it into a draft beer line. And so, um, kind of nice that you recently had Rick Raish on, um, not to jump ahead of ourselves, but we actually did some work with him about a year and a half ago or about a year ago, actually, I guess, um, where, we very much are trying to do the same thing as, as Rick is. We're trying to provide a solution where we can more or less provide a, a reassurance or, or serve as an assurance policy that by implementing our technology, we want to maintain, if not improve, uh, the line cleanliness of, again, within tap rooms or stadiums or what have you. Um, and that's what we've been setting out to prove. And, and that's what we have been proving and, and succeeding at very well uh, over the past couple of years. So what is your footprint then? Is it, I, I assume it's not just Milwaukee, right? You're kind of a little bit bigger. Uh, where, yeah, that's you know, correct. How far do you reach out? Yeah. So um, to be quite honest, conveniently uh, being in Milwaukee, we've been able to make a lot of headway mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, just looking into our backyard um, and, and partnering with local craft breweries, everyone from, you know, the smaller guys to rapidly growing breweries like Broken Bat here in Milwaukee and um, up to the, you know, the, the very established and large players such as Lakefront, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. historic breweries really. Uh, so it's been convenient working with them, but we also know that, we're not just trying to serve Milwaukee. Um, uh -huh. and that was one of the reasons why we, why we started reaching out and working with different service providers and, and hospitality groups. Um, I, I think we're going to get into the, the impact or the fallout of, of COVID-19 a little quicker than maybe I would have imagined, but, um, we had a number, we had and, and still have a number of projects and trials and, um, I guess, uh, partnership or, or business opportunities across the country, really. Um, whether that is on the East Coast, uh, in North Carolina, in Colorado, um, in California, uh, we, something I was personally pretty pumped about and still am, um, we have a number of uh, trials with uh, concession groups with ballparks. Okay. Um, there is no baseball as of late. Yeah. And so we're, we're, we're on hold for that, but but yeah, that was kind of a longer answer to your question, but we certainly are, um, we are outside of Milwaukee going down to Chicago um, with the end goal of, of rolling this out into as many draft systems as, as we can. So as you go in, I mean, obviously things have changed the last four months, but you know, prior to that, when you were really out there and developing business was, was, were clean draft lines and the technology that you, you bring forward something that uh, hotel or not, you know, I guess hotels, bars, restaurants, sure. but also craft. Let's, let's separate. Sure. Is the bar and the restaurant aware of the importance of a clean draft line 
in the same way that hopefully a craft brewery is? Or do you see a distinction when you're talking to these folks to try to kind of create those relationships? It's an awesome question. This whole thing has been very much a learning experience for myself. And I am finding that craft breweries certainly are much more in tune with what's coming through that line because case in point and very simply put it's their beer and through my eyes it's their reputation um not to narc at all on on uh bars or or hotel chains or whatever it might be because if they have a solid service provider in place such as as rick and and premier draft beer services those lines are going to be taken care of for sure um i would just say there's a heightened awareness and you know, I would say it's a little more personal uh, or personal oh, yeah. with, with craft brews because it is their beer, right? Yeah. They designed and crafted that beer to be a very specific taste and look and smell. Um, and they're going to try and eliminate as many factors as they can uh, that may hinder or screw that up. Right. Right. That makes total so. sense. So <laughs> that's a really good point. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, so, so how do you compel a restaurateur then uh, to to spend this their extra money um, to to put in your your technology as opposed to just having you know their 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 bar back doing it you know once a week or whatever and yep. uh, you know occasionally producing a really shitty Coors Light which believe it or not <laughs> I am not a Coors Light drinker but it tastes better out right. in Colorado well but it's I mean it's I mean as you probably know right being there in the yeah. Uh, the beer that you can drink close to where it's made usually just tastes a hell of a lot better. And it probably has to do with the water too, but alas, anyhow. um, Yeah. What kind of sales pitch, what, or not even sales pitch, right. But you know, how long does it take to sell that apathetic uh, business owner to, uh, to buying your service? Yeah. It's an awesome question. So there's, there's really two, two main components or, or really goals that we try and make really clear. Um, and that can be realized on, on the user's end fairly quickly. Number one is, is what we just talked about. So the quality, the um, almost brand management, the reputation management, if you want to look at that you know, through that lens of we want to make sure our beer is being served through the cleanest line, cleanest environment possible. Yeah. The other side of it is cost savings. And so diving in, a little bit into um, or a little bit more into what our technology actually does is we set out to prove that draft guard is just as good, if not better than regular caustic cleaning. So as you just alluded to, um, uh, you know, industry standard as, as the, the Brewers Association puts out, you should be cleaning your lines every two weeks. Mm-hmm. That's generally what they say. Does that happen everywhere? No. It doesn't. You and I both know that, whether you have a shitty cord light yeah. or really, unfortunately, if you have a spotted cow here in, in, in Wisconsin served through a nasty line. You, you don't want to drink the thing ever again. No, you, you think can it's taste it. Yeah. Uh, you, you can smell the thing, you know, before you even get it to your lips. But um, yeah, I mean, and it's unfortunate uh, because you think it's the beer's fault when it's really the line it's being yeah. served through. So Nevertheless, we wanted to prove that we're just as good, if not better than caustic. So let's use, I will answer your question with, with no, the cost savings aspect. Okay. Um, I like to learn, buddy. I like to learn. It's good for my good. brain. Yeah. We're on the same page then. It's off yeah. to a good start. For sure. um, we, when we go into trials or new partnerships, we tend to set it up in a trial format and, and base it off of, okay, what is your current cleaning cycle? Are you a craft brewery? Are you a restaurant? You know, cleaning every two weeks. Are you cleaning every week because you're that much more paranoid? Um, Or are you a bigger stadium or arena where you are more than aware of how much beer you're pouring down the drain and you're already at a four week cycle or a six week cycle or, you know, there's a lot of variables that could be a play, but where are you guys at? We want to show you what, where you could be. So let's let's roll. Yeah. So wait, so so you're, what is the average cycle of a of a ballpark? Because it, like what I mean, it, it, it's a lot of things are making sense. Like in particular, yeah. why ballpark draft beer tastes shitty oftentimes. Mm-hmm. What you're saying, four to six weeks? 
It very well could be. Holy shit. My it very well could be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You heard that, everybody. I know. <laughs> I, the well, and I, and, well, and now I'm saying no, stick to draft, because I'll tell you why. I know. Um, you know, and it's, if you look at it from purely a business or operational standpoint, you have a ballpark or stadium, whatever it might be. You need to get the beer from the keg to the tap up on the, you know, the upper deck. Yeah. We're talking hundreds of feet of line. That's, that's a shit ton of beer yeah. that needs to go up there. And so, you know, breaking it down to the basics, what's the process of cleaning the beer line? You push all the beer out of the line with a bunch of water. You pour that water out. You run caustic through it. Hopefully, you're doing a recirc um, uh, process of, of flushing that caustic through the whole system. And then you fill it back up with water uh, to push that caustic out. And then you fill it back up with beer. Well, regardless of, its, uh, of if it's you know uh, a 15 or a 30-foot line or a 450-foot line, you have to get rid of that beer to yeah. push the caustic through. If it's a 450 foot line, it's a hell of a lot of beer that you have to push down the drain. You don't have a choice. Gotcha. So it's fine. It, you have to clean the line 100%. But I think through the eyes of, of on that scale, when we're talking that long of a run, they're going to be more than aware of how much beer they're pouring down yeah. the drain. So easiest way to manage that. Let's, let's, let's pump it out from every two weeks to every four weeks. Cause you're cutting yeah. it in half right away. So, I'm sorry to bring that bad news to you. No, no, no. It makes total sense. But I, okay, back to back to your story. Back yes. to the draft guard story. Then, obviously, because I think uh, you're you're telling me or us that you're offering a solution that's different than caustic. Yes. So continue. So let's start with the the Brews Association recommended or suggested uh, two week cycle. We go into a brewery, um, let's say here in Milwaukee, they're cleaning their lines, they're breaking down faucets and couplers every two weeks, just as they're doing awesome. They're doing a good job. They're still aware of how much beer they're pouring down the drain. So we go in, we say, okay, we're going to start with taking some some baseline measurements and, and data via HTTP testing, which is kind of the, the standard standard issue field test of, hey, how, how clean is my line? Um, the BA talks about it in their quality quality manual, draft quality manual. Um, we coming out of the water treatment world, we also brought in dip slides, which is very similar to an ATP test. I'm sure you're, you're familiar with it. Okay. Um, you get a quick 48 turnaround on, okay, this is how many, this, this is the bacteria reading. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily tell you what bacteria, but it gives you an idea of, of what's going on. Um, and then more so recently, we've been working with uh, the actual quality labs of these crap breweries to say, okay, let's actually dive into it. We know what the ATP is saying. It's spitting out a number. Here we're, here's where mm -hmm. we're at. But what is that? What reductions are we seeing? So on and so forth. So we go in. We take that baseline, baseline measurement. We install our equipment um, and make sure it's running properly and, and making sure that our technology, which is um, a chemical-free system, uh, is working properly. And, and what does working properly mean? It means it, propagating, generating and propagating our technology, a low-frequency signal into the beer line and throughout the entire line itself. So we can get into this um, in, a, in a later question because I know we can branch off into a number of different uh, topics right now but nevertheless we in, we ensure that our technology is working properly and then we say okay we got the baseline data mm -hmm. don't clean your lines for the next eight weeks okay. we're going to come in every two weeks we're going to take the same measurements we're going to run the same tests same labs we're going to show you that by the end of eight weeks of no caustic running through the line but still costing costing still cleaning the faucets, the couplers, as you normally would, mm -hmm. without any caustic running through the line, we're going to show you that the lines are just as clean, if not cleaner, than you would have been cleaning with caustic, wow. just with draft guard. And so, so that's how we have approached. Go ahead. No, no. Okay. So, so is your technology, I mean, explain the, the translation from water treatment to this, like the technology itself, right? We're talking, obviously, yeah. I much, much larger scale, you know, yeah. usage of this technology into a more kind of very specific usage of it. 
just explain that translation if you could in terms of how it yeah. functions. Yeah. So the the I'll give you a couple of visuals. Um, we we designed and, and developed and have since proven and validated a chemical free water treatment system. Okay. Wow. We you know probably a decade ago uh, we originally started in oil and gas. Um, the oil and gas industry on onshore and offshore oil and gas fields where they're pull, pulling oil up from, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of, of meters deep. Mm-hmm. Well, in that oil, there's a little bit of water uh, being pulled up within that water. There's a ton of minerals, as you can probably manage or, or imagine. It, it's very mineral rich. As they pull that up and it reaches a phase change, whether that's a, a pressure drop or a temperature change, those minerals within that solution want, want to precipitate out and, and plug the wells and, and scale up all the equipment and heat exchangers and so on and so forth. Yeah. So our solution, well, I should say the, the typical remedy or the traditional remedy in the oil and gas industry was shutting down the whole system you know, a bunch of downtime pumping acids and different chemicals down hole, um, you know, physically jetting out pipes, yeah. hours and millions of dollars, ridiculous cost to, to try and unplug all this, you know, mineral and biological following. What our system does, we attach our system at the top of a wellhead and we conduct we generate and conduct and propagate a low frequency signal it's nothing more than a radio frequency okay. downhole we use the water column itself to carry our signal and very simply put we're manipulating those minerals to stick to themselves so that by the time they reach that point that pressure that that phase change that i mentioned earlier by the time they get to that point where they want to precipitate out and form scale and plug up the wells they because they're sticking to themselves, they go out with flow, taken care of. So we, we actually have a partner now who handles everything oil and gas. It's kind of our sister company. We handle everything outside of oil and gas. Um, but they have wells running intervention free for years on end, whereas those things would have been plugging up, you know, monthly or, or weekly or if not daily. So, so – yeah, this is a, this is awesome. Keep going, keep going. I'm I'm very intrigued by this. I'm, I'm guessing there are plenty of nerds that are listening to this that are intrigued as well. So so get out. I I would love nothing more than that. So that that's kind of our origin story. We okay. quickly moved into everything outside of oil and gas. Um, specifically moved into the residential and the HVAC space. So in the residential space, I don't know how you, how your water is out there, but um, in areas that have hard water where they have calcium buildup, where they have, you know, calcium building up on their shower heads and, and faucets and in their pipes and water heaters, we manage that very well. Um, we sell about, we probably move about 5,000 to 5,500 units a year, um, as an alternative to water softeners. Um, so homeowners and, you know, Southern California and, and Texas where they have really hard water. We are uh, implementing our technology and treating all the water in their house uh, and in their plumbing system and managing those minerals, preventing scale and, and removing, oftentimes removing scale that's already built up in their system. So is it, is it a device then? I mean, is it, it, is. It, where yeah. does that yep. go for, uh, you know, residentially, let's, before we even get back to yeah. breweries, where does that go on the, in the house? Yeah, so we install it uh, right at the water heater. Actually, we have um, it's a small box. It's a four by six box. It uses one ten power. It is as fancy as the sounds. It's it's not that complicated. Um, you know, it's it's really based on a, a decades old concept um, that we that we kind of fine tuned. We built a better mousetrap. Very simply put. Um, we install it at the water heater. We have, we have essentially one signal cable coming out and we attach to the hot and cold water feeds and we are able to walk throughout the house uh, with an oscilloscope and we can actually measure our signal anywhere throughout the house because we're using the water itself to, to carry our, our signal, our treatment signal. 
Wow, that is uh, yeah. that's fascinating. At what point did did the crew realize that this could be used not just for oil and gas, but for uh, craft beer, for beer lines, not just craft beer, but for beer yeah. lines? Yeah, so that so since our focus had been on on the everything outside of oil and gas, where we really came to the realization or, or I guess reassured ourselves that, Hey, we can move into beer is what we did in the HVAC side of things. And so we have been able to develop quite the brand name for ourselves um, and really, really prove that we're dominant compared to, to chemical treatment, chemical water treatment um, as well as any other chemical free system that has entered the market. Again, just talking water now um, where what we, I, I alluded to this earlier, but specifically with HVAC or, or cooling system. So, um, you know, cooling towers or, or fluid coolers, what have you on top of buildings, specifically when it comes to uh, managing biofilm or cessile bacteria, back in, I, th I believe it was 2009, but ASHRAE, are you familiar with ASHRAE? Uh, it sounds yeah. familiar, but I'm not 100% sure, buddy. Nod your head. <laughs> okay. um, it's uh, the American Society of, um, now I'm forgetting the letters, American Society of Refrigeration, Heating, Refrigeration, Heating and Refrigeration Association of, of Something Asia. like that. Words. Okay. ASHRAE, kind of the, the governing organization of all the standards and protocols mm -hmm. of the HVAC world. There were a number of chemical free systems that entered the market saying and, and making claims that, Hey, we can, we can reduce biofilm. We can prevent the growth of biofilm and so on, so on and so forth. They put together a protocol and, and commissioned it through the university of Pittsburgh uh, to test all of these chemical free systems that were in the market. Mm -hmm. I think the first round of tests, they may be, I think, I believe it was five or six different technologies, all chemical free um, ranging from magnetic to uh, ultrasound, um, none of the technologies passed. Wow! No, no one or no technology actually passed that protocol, and, and you know, essentially compared against the control. We get, we went in two years later. Once we had gotten started, went through that same protocol, and we achieved a ninety eight percent inhibition of cessile bacteria or biofilm compared against the control. To date, over a decade later, we are the only chemical free system to have still passed that protocol. Wow. So wow. That has been a game changer. And that, to your question, that is the only reason why we felt confident moving into the draft beer space. Okay. Okay. That is fascinating. Okay. Holy shit. Um, I know the background. <laughs> that's uh, okay. So, so, so talk us, talk me through, you get into this space right now. Um, how does it work uh, in terms of installation uh, for, and then, and then obviously upkeep at, for a, uh, a bar, for a, a craft beer or, you know, a, a tap room. How does it work? Um, how does the install work and, and all of that? Let's go there. And also, you know, how do you keep a Rick Reich in business as opposed to being a competitor? Because obviously I'm assuming he wants to use your technology and kind of service it, but go ahead. I want to hear this. Sure. sure. So, yeah, I mean, step, step one was um, based on the, the traditional approach of cleaning beer lines, which is mm -hmm. caustic, which is chemicals. It's the same thing we run into the water world. So we knew that we were going to have to collect as much data as we could. Right. That's why we partner with craft breweries, so on and so forth. Phase two, as we're rolling this thing out and, and the impl implementation side of things, we're working directly with service providers. We're working directly with craft breweries themselves who may clean their own lines. Um, and now we're moving into these hospitality groups where we go in. Um, let's just say we're working directly with a craft brewery. We go in, um, oftentimes we would, you know, do a trial with them because we want to show them that, Hey, we're not making this stuff up and, and we're willing to stick our necks out. And, and we want to show you the data. We want to show right. you so that at the end of the day, you have the reassurance that, Oh, okay. I, I know that my lines are staying clean. Are they pretty scared um, when you tell them, Hey, we're going to wait eight weeks. Are they? I mean, yeah, dude, it, they're skeptical as hell yeah. and understandably. So the, the, the beer world in particular and I, and I know we're on a little bit of a time constraint, but the beer world, just as we see in the water side of things, 
there's been a little bit of a black eye that's been put on the market because of other players who have tried doing the same thing and who have come out in the past and said, Hey, we got this thing and you don't have to clean your lines yeah. and you can save a bunch of money and you're going to be good. Well, there's no data. Um, oftentimes they're being sold a spreadsheet and just looking at the saving side of things. Whereas we really tried to, and still continue to collect and prove and show as much data as we can, because we're not hiding anything. Right. Um, and at the end of the day, we're, we, know the value that it can provide and that it is providing. So we want these guys on our team, right? So um, insulation is, is simple. Uh, it's non-invasive. We're not cutting beer lines. Um, you know, as we, as we got started, we originally looked at that method of like, we need some type of conductive path into the fluid so that our technology can work properly and, I think the first time we threw that idea out to a bar owner, he was like, I don't want to cut my lines. Like, I don't want you guys to destroy my system to implement this thing. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, so we quickly worked around that. Um, easiest example, and I guess a visual that I would give you is uh, if a space has fobs, um, you know, to, to control the fob or the, the fob, the foam um, in their lines, that's a great spot for us to install. Ah. Uh, we can literally hose clamp, uh, take a small little hose clamp and send jumper wires to from fob to fob to fob and get our signal into each and every single one of those beer oh lines. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. It yeah, sounds so, so simple. Like it's just, it's, it's, I guess that's, that's the value of it, right? It's so simple. It, it really is. Um, and we're working on a couple of different prototypes to make it even more simple for different, you know, not every draft system, as, as I'm sure you have seen, not every sim system is the same. So we're trying to make <laughs> sure. An understatement, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're trying to make sure that we have options and, and flexibility in place so we can adapt to different systems. Yeah. Um, but the, the cool part is once it is installed uh, and from our, from our end, um, you know, technically speaking, okay, it's looking good. We'll take measurements. The, the technology that we use to actually measure and, and validate that our technology is working, we can, we can turn our computer screen and show the brewer, the bar owner, uh, we can show them our signal. It, it's not the smoke and mirrors thing like plug it in. Yeah, it's working. It's no, here's the signal. We're going to measure the voltage. We're going to measure the frequency. Let's walk 50 feet away. Let's walk 250 feet away. Let's go to the tap and I'll show you the same exact signal. And by the way, way the only way that signal is getting over here is through the beer itself wow holy cow what does the ba think of all this what's the brewers association say i mean i'm assuming you're working with them are they cool with everything are they skeptical what what's going on there they're skeptical okay. i mean we, we're on the unfiltered podcast so in, in light of, of being transparent <laughs> they're they're understandably skeptical okay um not that they're poo-pooing the idea or shooting it down. We've been engaged with them, um, and it's certainly an ongoing conversation. From our eyes, we can't have enough data. Yeah. And so as we kind of move up the ranks of working with, you know, the local breweries, the regional breweries, and then really the, the national breweries, you know, um, you know we, we want to partner with the top dogs mm -hmm. in the industry. Um, and it's – the side note would be it's ironic – uh, I guess a, a moment for us to pause and not laugh, but it's a little ironic seeing what we do with some of the, the larger, like not craft breweries, but the, the big guys, mm -hmm. um, what we do for them on the process side of things. It, it's more or less the same thing that we're trying to do with the craft breweries on, on the, you know, the dispensing side of, the, of things. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, uh, the Brewers Association, we 100% want to partner with and align with, and, and we are working towards that, um, being clear about, hey, we're not replacing line cleaning. We still encourage and recommend and urge uh, and make really clear that we're not handling the faucets. We're not handling the couplers, and you should still 100% be cleaning those on a regular basis. Um, okay. So, Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good question, and, and all of this is very much a process and learning experience for everybody involved. Um, with what we've proven to date, we're, we're pretty reassured, and, and we're pretty pumped with, with what we've got going. 
Well, you're a young company, obviously. You kind of said, you know, really not around that long. How do you continue to spread? Is it getting in the ear of Rick at Premium Draft Beer Services, who then gets in the ear of, you know, Ken Hire, the CEO of Tivoli, or Charlie Berger at Denver Beer Co.? Uh, yeah. Or is it you calling up and you explaining? Is it like how, how does it work? I suppose to get your technology into places that aren't just in Milwaukee, but are in Pittsburgh and, yeah. York and you know that California. It's it's a blend. Uh, I mean, it, it's a mix of all of the above. I mean, yeah. um, when we when we first got started, we had no. I mean, as as every company does. And I, quite honestly, I was pulling the student card. I was still at Marquette at the time. And I mentioned Broken Bat earlier. Um, I, the owner, one of the owners is, is, uh, is a Marquette grad. So I messaged him on Facebook and said, hey, I'm a senior at Marquette, working on a project revolving around you know, draft beer. We'd love to get your input. And we met. And uh, Tim Pauly is, is who I'm thinking of. He was, and he will tell you, he was skeptical as hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, with, with the concept and he said, but I'm also aware of what we're trying to do here and I'm willing to, to see what happens because if it does work, you're solving one of the top three problems that we run into on a weekly basis. So it's aligning ourselves and working with craft breweries mm-hmm. because it's their beer. Um, it's getting their testimonial and, and I'm not asking for, you know, we're not, we're not going in and asking for written testimonials and Hey, can you answer phone calls? If they can do that, Wow. I mean, that, that's awesome. But it's also aligning with service providers. We want to provide the tool to Rick, the, the Ricks of the world, mm-hmm. um, because of the efficiencies that it can provide them. Um, you know, if they're cleaning stadiums and they can't get to the ballpark because of the homestand and they have to wait another week or another two weeks, they have the reassurance that, okay, well, our lines are being being treated, you know, around the clock with draft guard. Cool. We got that. We don't have to freak out. We're good. Um, and then absolutely. I mean, it'll, I mean, aligning with and, and partnering with the BA. I mean, that, that's certainly part of it. We, we want to make this a mainstream thing and um, it's a journey. Do you yeah. get in with, uh, with, with Brewers Guilds? Have you tried that approach, you know, with the, with the Wisconsin Brewers Guild or the, or the Illinois? No. Yeah, we haven't engaged them directly, but it, it it's on my list. It's yeah. uh it's coming up here shortly. Um, and that would I mean, if using Wisconsin as an example, if we can point to hey, we're working with these dozen breweries here. Uh, here's the data, and yeah. actually a few of them provided testimonials. This is something. Um, we we had the chance. It wasn't the Wisconsin Guild, but the the Milwaukee group of breweries. I think there are maybe thirty or so of them together. They meet on a monthly basis. Um, which, in and of itself, side note, fascinating thing that craft breweries are like so tight, yeah, and yet they're kind of competing with one another. Yeah, it's it's a weird world, isn't it? Yeah, I know. No, yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. but uh, we had the chance. We were invited in to meet with the Milwaukee group. Um, okay that were the ones to bring us in and they said guys you know we're in this to to provide and and really offer solutions that we find are working with us and we're all in this together you know a high tide raises all ships yeah uh, we really want to inform you guys about this so um we had a great meeting with them um this was last year now but uh had a great opportunity and and just continuing the conversation um uh, around all of that has, has been huge and we're grateful for it. Before we wrap up, I got to ask you, you know, there's an elephant in the room. That is the Rona. Uh, how, how I, I would assume at this time of year, this is when you usually get busy. Uh, maybe it's a little bit before this, but sure. what, what, what has, how have you been affected um, at draft guard? And then what are you all, yeah. you know, for the next 12 to 18 months? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it was inevitable, right? Um, very simply put, a lot of bigger projects of ours have been put on hold. Okay. Uh, I've been referencing ballparks and stadiums and arenas. We had a, a number, we still have a number of exciting uh, projects in queue, um, ranging from you know Miller Park here in Milwaukee to mm-hmm. Dodger Stadium. Um, and... 
it's kind of badass stuff just through my eyes. I, I, you oh, know, it I'm, is. I'm, I'm 23. So this is all, <laughs> this is all very exciting, but also it's, it's a very real opportunity for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a baseball dude, so I, I can't wait to get there. So very simply put a, a number of projects have been put on hold. Um, and it's, if anything were to be frustrating, I think for everybody involved, it's just playing things by ear. So patience has been a huge thing um, of, Hey, we're shooting for this month. We should be good by now. Okay. We're going to have to push it off another month. Okay. We're going to have to push it off. And it's like all good. Mm -hmm. This is not me calling out. We're literally all in the same boat. Yeah. Um, so I'm not worried. We're going to get to that point um, where I see things going. I 100% believe that establishments, whether it's a craft brewery, your local bar or the stadiums and arenas, I really believe that they're going to come out of this whole thing with that much more of an awareness of both sanitation, cleanliness, quality, and cost savings. Yeah. Yeah. We started, sure. we started this episode talking about those two things. That's been our goal before this whole Rona thing. Um, but I, I really believe that it, it will, it will come down to that. Um, and, and we'll be ready and, and we're here to, to try and assist really in any way to, to help them out with it as we are all trying to figure this thing out. For sure. Um, as, as we wrap up here, Kevin, knowing that we do have a lot of brewers who listen and, 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 you know, restaurant owners, how, how can folks reach you? How can folks reach draft guard? What's the best way to learn yeah. more? Yeah, absolutely. So our website is draftguard.com. Uh, we spell it, uh, D R A U G H T. Nice. Uh, guard.com. That's how um, it should be spelled, right? I, well, that's why we made the choice. Yeah. Um, yeah. But draftguard.com, um, we're on social, uh, at draftguard, Instagram. Um, Instagram is probably the best place, but Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, okay. uh, LinkedIn. But I would say either the website or the, uh, or Instagram, either way. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, Kevin, I hope this isn't the last time we talk because I think, uh, you know, you should sponsor our podcast, but we can talk about that some other time. Um, uh, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, uh, dude, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I will be sure to, to share your information as we go out and we start you know, recommencing these interviews with people. Um, we're slowly, you know, doing the, on the, on the, uh, beer patio interviews. So it's, yeah. it's things are happening, but, um, thank you so much. Uh, that was the most thank that I've you. learned in a long time. Uh, stay safe <laughs> and uh, enjoy that beautiful town. that is Milwaukee. Absolutely. I can All right. do that. Thank you so much for your time, Sam. This was okay. great. Of course. Bye, Kevin. Take care, buddy. Uh, take care. When they come to take